presentation I'd like to speak about the site of, late Neolithic site of Olga Chisholm and the consumption patterns and morphology of cattle in this late Neolithic settlement. But first of all, we have to speak about the site of Olga Chisholm. Olga Chisholm is a very special site located in the Central European, in the Carpathian Basin, in the uh, northeastern part of Hungary. And this is a special macro structure. It uh, includes two different types of settlements, a dial settlement and a horizontal one. But uh, in my presentation, I'd like to speak only all, all of this, all of the settlements dated to the uh, first half of the 5th millennium BC. So I would like to speak about only the animal bone material because it's a huge amount. So about the preliminary report of the animal bone identification. Uh, until now, I identified more than 76,000 bone fragments and the analysis of the animal bones not finished yet. But we can make, we can make a draft of the uh, meat consumption of the latent settlement on the horizontal, uh, horizontal settlement. So the main domestic species uh, in this period the, was the cattle, and the another domestic species, main domestic species, sheep and goats, and the pigs uh, had a less, much less uh, significance uh, compared with the with the other sites from the periods. What is interesting, the and important, the. Uh, consumption of the of the wild games, because the the these animals has a very huge significance uh, in the meat consumption, meat eating patterns of the settlement. So the problem is that the bone fragments extremely fragmented. And I can identify only the 75% of the bones. So what you can see in the picture, this is the this is the better part of the of the animal bone material. But now let's speak about the cattle, the most important species of the of the late Neolithic settlement. Uh, what what do we uh, know about this this animal species uh, on the basis of the bones? Usually. Uh, the, in osteometric st studies, the morphological identification of different cattle types is based on the uh, metabolical measurements and the skull formations. But in this case, the uh, a huge sample, because I prepared a sample for this presentation, a uh, sample of uh, uh, 20,000 of bone pieces. So in this sample, only a few complete uh, cattle metapodial was uh, uh, observed. So, in this huge amount of material, it's uh, very, very fragmented. I speak again. So, I can uh, only uh, calculate the other size only, only five times, and this is more or less uh, completely fitted in the average of the, of the uh, periodical. Uh, generality of the cattle with their size. And on the basis of the distal fragments, I can compare the... Oh, sorry. I compare the spread of the distal epiphysis and the spread of the uh, diaphysis, and we can realize that well, uh, in, in both cases, this is a rubbish, a rubbish shape, uh, uh, distribution in the case of metacarpus and metacarpus also, so it's a strong correlation between these this measurements. It's not a miracle, but we cannot realize any uh, groups or subgroups that we can know anything about the morphology of these animals. But we have few bone cores, 
larger one and a smaller one and uh, and on the basis of this uh, we can suggest that possible two types of cattle uh, represented in the settlement uh, in the uh, in this period but uh, and this is more or less reflect to the works of Istvan Bures, Hungarian archaeologist, who noticed in his work that uh, during the Neolithic time in the Capetian Basin, two type of cattle maybe uh, lived in the in the area, a larger one and a smaller one. But what we can do with this fragmented, extremely fragmented information? Well, the possible answer is the Geometric morphometrics. Geometric morphometrics is an analytical application to compare shapes without absolute sizes. This method originated to Darcy Thompson, uh, who in 1917 expressed change in, in a shape in organ organism by transforming the data into coordinates, observing diagnostic points on them. So he not measured the differences, but try to find different, uh, very characteristic points, and try to uh, projectile this, these points in a grid, and this grid uh, will be the basis of the um, of the comparison. So the researcher have to define these points named landmarks. And these landmarks has to be, uh, have to be uh, general, have to be well identified, and have to be exact and, uh, and repeatable uh, points on, of, the, of, the, of the object or the bones or, or, the, or the animals. So in my case, I uh, defined 22 uh, landmarks in the metatarsals and 19 landmarks in the metacarpals. These metacarpals describe the shape of the of the object or, or the bones, and the shape, the mean of the shapes, the mean shape will be the basis of the uh, comparison with the individual, with comparison with each other, and comparison with the mean shape. And about the toolkit, so for, so for this um, uh, analysis I use the GMO package by Adam Stoll in uh, 2016. This is a very good full all-in-one uh, package uh, to 2D and 3D uh, uh, geometric morphology analysis. And this is the part of the R, of course. R is a um, statistical language which is uh, uh, impl the implementation of S, which, is, which was developed by the Bell Laboratories in the, in the 50s. Maybe. So, and I use the RStudio, um, which is a, a graphical user interface of the, of the R. And let's see the results. <coughs> First, let the color pass. On the left, you can see the, the wall landmarks of of all individuals, so this is a scatter plot of all the all individuals, and on the right, this is the result of the of the uh, general practice superimposition. This method is uh, uh, kicking off the measurement, the faults of the measurement, and describe and define the centroids of the, of the landmarks, and this is the base of the mean shape. This is a result of the outlier ana analysis because, uh, and all of these specimens is in in the border. It's very important because the because the very ex the extremities can influence to the to the next uh, analysis. So we have to uh, uh, close uh, out the 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 extremities, the the outsiders. And in this picture. We can visualize the uh, most in order individual, then the comparison of the most in order individual and the mean shape. So this is the 
this is the basis of the uh, uh, comparison without without absolute sizes, only just the topological points. Here is the uh, result of the parametric analysis. You can see the extreme ease of the shapes, and it's very notable that that uh, this is a this is a high uh, correlation and a normal relation of the of the co uh, correspondence between the uh, size and the and the shape. So in this case, we can realize that that the size and the shape formation is uh, strongly uh, correspond with each other. And finally, the result of the PCA, the principal component analysis, nearby the axis you, uh, you can see the, the extent of the, of the shapes. And in, in this picture, this is a clear that it's more or less homogeneous group of the, of the individuals, but maybe it's dividable by subgroups. For this separation, I use the uh, K-mean partitioning uh, the total within sum of square elbow method, and this is recommend three different groups for me, and this is the uh, result of the giving partitioning on the basis of the uh, PC loadings. And now we can see. I will I will uh, speak about later more, but now first a bit, uh, see the metatarsals shortly. This. Uh, scatter plot, uh, GPA results, we haven't got any outliers also, and the uh, result of the parametric analysis is almost the same, so it's very, very strong correlation between the size, between the uh, uh, shape variations, and the result of the principal component analysis, we can see that, that it's, it's very, very similar, very small differences, but maybe dividable uh, individual groups. After the K-mean partitioning, it's recommend to us two groups of uh, on the basis of the factor loadings, and we can see the these two groups. But the question is, what does uh, what do, do these uh, these groups meaning? Well. Uh, the ge geomorphematicians usually call the the uh, axis of the the first axis of the principal component analysis in in the morphometrics the axis of the sectional dimorphism. And if we see the shapes, the axes of the shapes, we can see that this is a more robust, more spread uh, uh, form. Than the other one. So maybe it's, it's, it means that these two groups uh, mean that these are boys and these are girls. Okay, but what about the metacarpals? Because in the case of metacarpals, we uh, separate three different uh, uh, groups. In the case of the group number one and number two, Maybe it's divided by the first component axis. It's maybe the same situation, girls and boys. But what about the? What is the meaning of the of the third group? If we see again the plot, we can realize that these shapes, sorry, these shapes, and uh, so maybe the the basis of the separation. Uh, these extremities of the of the distal surface of the distal epiphysis, because this modification of the surface usually correspond with the with the ages of the animal, the body size of the animal, the body form of the animal. Uh, so maybe I suggest the principal component, the factor of the principal component axis number two, is the age. So and this point of view, we can realize that these are boys, girls, and the younger individuals, the cults. 
And finally, we can conclude that, that we have extremely huge uh, amount of animal bone, bone material from this site, uh, but the fragmentation is very, very extreme and very, very high. So uh, the identification and the osteometrical studies, making the osteometrical studies is very, very uh, hard uh, process. The most important species was the cattle at the settlement, uh, and for the deeper uh, morphological analysis, uh, the GM analysis offered evidence that uh, from a morphological point of view, only one type of cattle was laid in the settlement, but uh, this cattle type had a wide body size variability and a wide sexual dimorphism variability. Well, thank you for your attention. <laughs> Oh,